Så, eh, som en del av den dagliga Almedalen-kommentaren så har jag gått ner på stan och för att se vilka av de här tipsen som jag är ute efter och söker nämligen hållbarhet, digitalisering, entreprenörskap som jag kan hitta bra exempel på och jag står just nu på Tech-arenan nere vid hamnen eh, och har gått runt och hittat eh, lite företag och ett jättespännande företag är Trust Trace som jag tror har en fantastisk möjlighet att revolutionera alla marknader och de har börjat i modeindustrin. Vi står här med en av grundarna som ska få presentera sig själv, sin roll och lite vad Trust Trace handlar om. Så vi säger hej. So hello, very nice to meet you. Hi. Uh, what a great thing that you're doing. Yeah. So uh, who are Good you time. and what's your role and uh, tell us a little bit about, about Trust Trace. Yeah. I'm Shamik and uh, I am the founder and uh, one of the founders of Trust Trace. Uh, I'm based out of Stockholm and then we are four founders. Uh, two of us are in Stockholm and two of us are based in India. Trust Trace is a platform which is helping the fashion brands to achieve full traceability for their products right from the fiber to the garment. Most of the brands only know their tier one and some of them know their tier two and all the risks that you see, you see with respect to environmental, social, child labor issues or uh, ethical practices come because there is a, a very long supply chain and they do not know about it. So we are helping them to first understand the full traceability and then based on that they are able to take care of risks associated with environmental, social and ethical issues. We are also helping them to ensure that the product integrity is maintained. If they are claiming it is a 30% organic cotton, they are very, very sure about it, right? So this helps them in preventing their reputational uh, being tarred by any any wrong claims being made, kind of a thing. So we are helping this, if you look at it in this picture, the full traceability, and then we help them to present this to consumers through their loyalty apps. Uh, we can get the full story and they can communicate it well. Well, for the people who don't really know this field of, of uh, the supply chain and the different tiers, can you give us a little bit of background on that? Yeah. So if you look at it, uh, uh, if I take a very a multi-layer jacket, right? In, in Scandinavian winters, you generally have a, a multi-layer jacket. That jacket actually has got around 150 different components. Now, think about the complexity for a company like a Houdini or a Fjall Raven to understand where the supply chain is originating from. As of now, they have been doing a lot of this manually. So for them to understand anybody who is providing the zippers or anybody where the zippers metal is coming from, it is a very tedious task. They used to, on an average, a brand typically spends one person, maybe for one full year to understand the traceability of just one product like this. We are helping them to achieve using digital technologies to do that in three months instead of 12 months and if they don't need one full person to do it. So they are able to do the things faster, cheaper and much more simpler. And this is giving them a huge confidence that they can understand their supply chain and take care of that risk. This is making their, their production much more responsible and they can stand their ground in front of the consumers and all. Because millennials, as you know, they are very, very conscious about these aspects. When they buy a product from a brand, they expect the brand to deliver on these environmental, social and ethical goals. Otherwise, once they lose that confidence, they are not going to come back to a brand. So this is the risk they are facing. So this is a way of helping the companies know their products, right? Yes. So they, it helps them to understand the complete product journey from the fiber to the whole garment and then also ensuring that they are following a proper process. Their suppliers are ensuring the proper wages are being paid. No child labor is there. If it is a chemical free product, it is really a chemical free product there for them. And um, so can you, you tell us, for instance, yes. an example of what you just told me, how, yes. how it works with this shoe, for instance? So for example, this shoe, right? So using our platform, you are able to establish where the leather comes from and is it a sustainably produced and no animal has been harmed in this production. Such kind of issues and how the tannery has tanned it, how the dyeing process has happened and the whole process of, of this whole thing. 
and this once you are established that this is a, a, a proper process a brand is comfortable like iceberg is comfortable with this sharing it with the consumer so they can share this using a, a consumer app the whole story they can tell the full philosophy behind the product why a particular material has been used what is the durability of this product etc and then they also can communicate with the consumer how to take care of this product yes this product is typically made for around five to six years of usage right now when you are not taking good care of it of course the usage time reduces so you need to dynamically update the user to how to take care of this uh, shoe after taking good care and all good things suppose after two years you are bored out of the shoes right we are also helping iceberg to promote this product for resale and renting through their platform so this is the way the consumer is able to take definitive actions to improve on responsibility and the circular business models and you are able to achieve fiber to garment then garment to fiber by which you are not putting pressure on earth's resources and you are not also putting cheap labor waste so you are ensuring you pay the right people the right wages you are taking care of the earth and finally you are getting a very sustainable product for a much more longer duration that's what you are achieving so how is this thing done hmm? uh, that, that you, you say that you can promote it for a second life yes whether it's rented out or yeah. going back into the yeah. uh, second sale hmm? yeah so maybe i will show you through a, a, a my my app so if you so, uh, see that once you have gone to a product you, you scan the product code yes we scan the qr code and this qr is just one tagging system we support also nfc tags we also support rfid tags and once you are able to achieve, uh, identify the product you get a full product journey there in this and then you are also able to give the products information and the care right you are able to give the complete journey of the product right from the where the leather came for for the shoes right to the point of where the weaving foam processing has been done and the final finishing has been done the brand is also able to share the philosophy behind the product what kind of materials have been used and why they have chosen those they are also able to instruct or give suggestions to the consumer about how to take care of the product so that it has the full useful life there an interesting part is that when a consumer buys the product they authenticate the product by which they the brand knows that this product is owned by the cons- the particular customer and after maybe one year or two years of usage or maybe three years of usage the customer can put it back to the brand website for resale or renting and maybe after five years of users they can also se- uh, put it for recycling and uh, there and throughout the complete life of the product that they are using they can always put it for repair so this way a brand and customer are are becoming a very very close uh, community in in which they take care of a particular product and that is what we are able to achieve using this consumer app so this is how we are ensuring that a customer is taking definitive steps actionable steps to improve the life of the product and also have a commercial value for them so this is how we are able to achieve all these in one go and all of this is done through uh, the tagging basically the tagging is a big big enabler and nowadays with all this iot technology is coming up you can do tagging much simpler faster and easier that's very interesting so via the tagging not only can you go back in the history of the product yes but you can also kind of bring it back into the the reseller market exactly. and also perhaps Oh, you said that you also bring it back to for recycling of the components. Correct. Did I understand it correctly? Correct. So, for example, this rubber may have a much longer life than the leather, right? So, what you can do, you can go to a specific recycler and get the maximum rubber out of a used and worn shoe. So, that is what the tagging. So, the, what we are doing here in the platform is we are using digital technologies first to do a lot of data crunching, peer review. We use blockchain. We use AI and artificial intelligence and machine learning to extract good data but this data are originating from suppliers but also from the products using tagging like NFC chips or a QR code and all that
It's interesting that you have different ways of tagging, so it's not always the QR exactly. code. Because each product has have a unique uh, way you consume it, right? A shoe, you can always put an NFC tag in it because there's a sole you can go in it. A multi-layer jacket, NFC tag will work very well. But if it is a t-shirt, yeah, you do not have that much amount of real estate to put a tag, uh, a NFC chip, then you have to use a, a QR code in a care label or something like that. This is how, and that that is the flexibility the platform provides. So if you look at Trustrace, we started around two and a half years back. And in this first year, we actually worked with a lot of these brands like Houdini, Iceberg and Philippa K to define what is their day-to-day -day problem. And then we built the version 1 and launched it last year in summer. And then this year again in uh, March we launched a new version based on further inputs coming from another 8 or 9 brands. And that is how we are evolving this platform and making it where we can make traceability a norm rather than a, uh, a wishful thinking. So how has it been to work with these companies, these pilot companies? You mentioned yes. Philippa K and Houdini and Iceberg. Um, have you been working with them to actually understand the, how they could manage the app or on their end? Mm -hmm. Have you work, been working on their end as well? Because yeah. there are a multitude of business systems and different things also exactly. to take care of. Well, they, have a, they have a business to run, right? And when they have started working with us, we have ensured that we are not taking too much of their time, but we, are, we have observed the way they operate. Supply chain is an area where I think most of the mid-tier and the larger companies are facing a lot of issues and also smaller companies. And we observed them, we found out what are the issues that they are facing and then we have been able to convert them into a product backlog and do uh, development and show it to them and take again a feedback. So we have followed a, a agile process in which we are, there's a continuous feedback loop and that is where I think Houdini, Iceberg and Philippa K, who are a very conscious brands, they have worked with us significantly to improve a platform like this because they are saying and the whole world knows, right? You have to show the numbers. As of now, there's a lot of talk going on, lot of plain English spoken and lot of greenwashing going around in this uh, when it comes to sustainability data. Whereas we are able to give real facts. We can tell you per product how much is the usage of a recycled polyester, how much is the usage of an organic cotton, how much is the usage of a sustainable leather. Getting to know your product. Exactly. And you are, and then as a, as a consumer, we can know, okay, this is what my actions will lead to. Otherwise, there is no way there is a way that the consumers, because then there's no difference between a very sustainable product and a not so sustainable product. How do you show the numbers? And that is what we are doing. But how have you managed the situation when they have, for instance, their own business systems? Is the product able, to, your yes. platform, is it able so to we, integrate with their already existing you know, system not flora? Not their systems, we are an open system. We, in, we believe that we, are, we will not solve the problem alone. We, will, we need to take the whole village and the whole world together to solve this problem. So we integrate with all their key uh, internal systems like an ERP system or a PLM system or an e-commerce system so that they do not need to do a lot of manual effort. Parallelly, we also integrate with external systems. So we, are, we have open APIs. We have already integrated with few of our partners like Circular Fashion who helps in uh, the recycling process faster. We have also opened uh, talking to multiple other standard agencies where we will integrate the platform with them so that they don't need to share the data in an Excel sheet and then we have to upload. So these are the things that we are also focusing and building on top of it. It's in, in its, itself, it's a platform, right? So we have to bring suppliers, brands, uh, retailers, as well as uh, standard agencies all together. And that is why the platform uh, will serve that purpose for them. I see. Um, are you only doing fashion? As of now, yes. Uh, but it is a $2.5 trillion industry. In fact, if you look at within fashion also, we have sub-segments. We have got outerwear and sportswear. We have got kids wear. We have got high street fashion. We have got luxury fashion. So these in each segments are easily, uh, each one of them are 100 plus uh, million and billions of dollars, right? So we are focusing currently on fashion industry. We have mapped the whole value chain. 
but we also have got requests coming from large industrial companies for conflict minerals we also have got requests coming from the food and processing uh, industry uh, specifically wine and alcohol as well as in the uh, food processing like meat processing industry and all we will take up these kind of areas of customization sometime during the year we currently are uh, trying to onboard as many uh, fashion brands as well as accessory brands onto the platform but uh, you know the opportunity is big this is a big problem the world is facing and we are trying to make it easier for them because i think that the the disruption will come if the system is adopted at a at a global scale that is only when the whole world will understand it is doable as of now everybody believes that oh climate change is going to happen because we cannot do much about it but we are going to convert them into actions that each consumer brand retailer can take on top of it very interesting yeah. so where are you in your own journey as a startup so we started around two and a half years back uh, initially we were supported by vinova uh, which is the swedish agency for innovation uh, we won the fashion tech competition in 2017 and then uh, the circular tech competition in 2018 and now we are in the round of raising the series a in the next uh, 45 days we'll be closing that round this gives us a lot of confidence with respect to building the platform further and further and also we have got paying customers we have got 10 brands who are paying customers we also charge a small fee to the suppliers so overall we are trying to become net positive in profit uh, we are already showing good signs of uh, uh, brand adoption already we also see retailers getting big uh, interested in, a, in our platform uh, like companies like e-commerce companies like Zalando, Boost, Asos and all and we hopefully will be uh, able to win a couple of these deals in the coming months there. So overall I would say in terms of the company stability, it's a stable company now, uh, it is growing fast and we expect to expand in Europe in the coming months and then further to the North America market. There. Thank you very much for yes. this very thorough information. Thank you and thanks for uh, coming and uh, talking to us. So this was Trust Race. Are you nyfikna på what they do and what other companies in liknande segment do, but mainly Trust Race? So are you going to come to the Tech Arena on the way down here in Visby? And if not, we'll see you in the next Almedalen comment and the next clip here on our channel. Have a good day.